We're now just going to have a look at some of the sigma laws that we have or just kind of conclusions we can make to make some calculations for ourselves easier. And um, we'll look at each sigma and then uh, or each law and with an example just try and understand why it is so. So if I have um, the summation of something but that something does not contain my index then in terms of the index it's some constant number so for example uh, we can look at sorry that's not sigma the summation of i going from whatever let's say from 2 until 100 okay that's going to take forever of let's say 7 that's going to take forever to do this, to add them, well, okay, not forever, it's going to take nine, however long it takes you to add up 99 terms, okay, but instead what we can do is see, but it's just going to be 7 plus 7 the whole time because there's no i to substitute, so it's just 7 plus 7 plus 7 for how many times will we add 7, okay, that's maybe the question. How many times are we going to add 7? Well, if we start at 2 and then we end at 100, it would be 99 times. How did I get 99? I said 100 minus 2 plus 1. Okay. So, what is the law? Well, the law is if there's a constant number, all I need to do is take that constant number and multiply it with b minus a is my b minus a plus 1. So in the end, this will just simply be 7 times 99, which is 693. That's quick, isn't it? Okay, let's look at another one of the laws. Okay, this law says, okay, so imagine I have the summation from A to B, and I have some function with I. Okay, I'm just going to write it like that. But, in front of that function, I have a constant. In other words, anything that does not contain I, usually just the number. Then, I can kind of ignore it or rather saying I'm not really ignoring it but I'm actually just going to multiply it outside of the Sigma okay so for example I'll say um, C well not example the constant number doesn't have to be considered okay I can just do this take it out Okay, and first do this, it's kind of what I'm saying, let's first kind of ignore it, but not really, it's still there, but we're only going to multiply it at the end. So I'm not going to multiply it with every term, I'm going to keep it outside, first add up all of the terms, and then finally I'm going to multiply with C. Okay, so let's look at an example, uh, let's say we have the summation of 1 i going from, let's keep it small, um, from 3 to 6 of 2 i. Okay, So we can say, well this is the same as saying 2 times the summation of i going from 3 to 6 of just i. Now what that means is I'm first going to do this, so i is 3, then i is 4, then i is 5, then i is 6, and only at the end am I going to multiply with the 2. Alternatively, I would have had 6 plus 8 plus, I would have just every time multiplied with a 2. Okay, But, just do it this way, it will also work. 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 5 is 12, plus 6 is uh, 12 and 6, 18. 18 times 2, 36. Cool. Next one. The next one is if I have two sigma, or not two sigmas, one sigma with two some functions. So A to B, 
and I've got some function with i here plus another function with a different function with i okay then I can treat them separately so I can first do the one and I'm just going to keep out the indexes for now and then do the other one and only add up the numbers in the end so again let's look at an example so I might have the sum of i going from 2 to 4 I'm going to keep it easy just for an example of 2 to the power of i plus i that is the same as taking the summation of 2 to the power of i if i goes from 2 to 4 plus the summation of i going from 2 to 4 of i so I can treat them separately in this one I now have 2 to the power of 2 which is 4 plus 2 to the power of 3 which is uh, 8 plus 2 to the power of 4 that's where I'm going to stop that gives me 16 plus and in this one I have 2 plus 3 plus 4 and that gives me a final answer of okay well let's do them separately 4 and that's 12 and that is 28 plus uh, 7 which is 9 so total answer 37 there we go now this would have worked if that was a plus or a minus so in other words the law extends a little bit it is not just for a plus it can work for minus as well so even if I'm subtracting two things or work for plus and minus just change the plus and minus in between here okay now for a very special law okay this is uh, a very special one okay if I if I add up the first n terms in other words I go from I starting at 1 all the way up to n whatever n is then it's a very simple law and that is that I take the last number plus the first number and I multiply it by with half the number of terms okay so how many terms are there well we see it's how to go from 1 to n will just be n terms divided by 2 so there's this very special law and how on earth did I get there well let me quickly show you let's say we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 99 Oh, no, let's go to 100. Okay. And we had to add up all of these. Okay, how quick would it have taken you to add up all of those? Well, there was there's a mathematician called Carl Friedrich Gauss. That's his picture. That's what he looked like. Okay. Now, when he was in primary school, I think about grade 1, he was given the task of adding up the first 100 integers like this. Um, and his teacher was probably bored and wanted to just give the class something uh, to do to keep them occupied and within only a few seconds he was able to give the answer he said teacher the answer is 5050 okay of course the teacher didn't believe him because the teacher himself wouldn't have been able to get the answer that quickly so how was this young mind able to get that answer so quickly and so brilliantly well he noticed this that 1 plus 100 gives me 101 2 plus 99 also gives me 101 3 plus 98 will also give me 101 in other words as I'm adding up all of these terms I'm always going to get 101 if I match the first one with the last one second one with the second last one I'll always get the same value so what do we notice we get 101 how many times do we get 101 well we're grouping them in pairs of two there's a hundred in total so well there will be 50 pairs which means it's 101 50 times or 50 times 101 which gives us 5050 brilliant don't you think well that's exactly the way that this works I take the the last term 
plus the first term, that was the 100, plus the 1, the 100 plus the 1, and I'm pairing them. And as I'm pairing them, how many pairs will I have? Well, it would be half the number of terms. I've got n terms, so it will be half those number of terms. Okay, so let's do one more example of them, of that. Okay, so let's take, it can be anything. Okay, let's take the sum of 400i going from 400 to, uh, let's say, 450. How much will that be? Okay, remember, we pair the first one, this one, and that one. Okay, so 450 plus 400. So that's the answer of every pair. How many pairs will we have? Well, how many numbers are there from 400 to 450? Well, there's 450 minus 400 plus 1 pairs. Okay, and since, uh, or not pairs, that's how many numbers there are that I'm adding, but they are paired in groups of 2. So I divide with 2. And what answer do I get? Well, this gives me 850. 850 times, this is 51 over 2, which gives me an answer of 21,675. Cool, don't you think? Well, that's all of the laws that we're going to look at now, and these laws can now help us to simplify um, our calculations when working with summation. We'll look at a few examples in the next video. See you then.